Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Okay, we've been teaching from uh, Bill. Are we working and recording correctly now? All right, I got the big thumbs up back there. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. We did finish Ephesians chapter 4 last week. And so we're glad we got through with that. Let's move into Ephesians chapter 5. And now, uh, I, I just understand this is not like a whole new thing. You know, um, Paul starts in chapter 4, verse 22. He says, uh, you've been taught by Jesus that you put off the former lifestyle, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And he goes on through the end of the chapter. And in verse, chapter 5, verse 1, he says this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, uh, um. Weirby, I'm trying to, uh, Weirby, you know, probably pronounced in German, Fierby, uh, W-I-E-R-B-E, um, says this in, in reference to the book of Ephesians. He said, Ephesians balances doctrine and duty. First, Paul reminds us of what God has done for us. Then he tells us what we must do for him in response to his mercies. Christian living is based on Christian learning. Uh, the believer who does not know his wealth in Christ will never be able to walk for Christ. Our conduct depends on our calling. Too many Christians live in chapters 1 through 3 and study the doctrines, but fail to move into chapters 4 through 6 and practice the duties. Now, that's about as accurate as you can get. And this, this you know, wasn't written like you know, two years ago in the middle of all the hyper crazy grace stuff. It's been written for some time. We have to understand that the, the book is divided. There is doctrine and there is duty. I don't have to do anything. I'm under grace. You're not reading your Bible. It is the whole counsel of the Word of God and not the part you like. Okay? Because I'm going I'm to tell you, if you're a Christian and you read the Bible, you're going to find parts you don't like. It, may, it puts responsibility on you that you just don't want to do. And the fact of the matter is, you got to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, the wonderful thing is, God empowers you to do it. But you still got to do it. Laying down and saying, I don't matter what I do because I'm under grace is just stupid. Be ye followers of God as dear children. And that sounds like a command to me. People run like there's only one commandment in the whole New Testament. That's the command of love. And that's just so erroneous. Like you just don't read enough of your Bible. You listen to some skinny jean guy tell you, you know, with, with deadhead, tell you what you can do whatever you want to do. And you're just not being, being truthful. You're not studying the Bible. Amen. And don't worry, I'm not coming in skinny jeans or skinny tights or skinny hat khakis. You don't want to see it, and I don't either. So if that's what I got to do to get you to listen to me, just turn me off now. Hallelujah. But I will teach the truth. Amen. I will not withhold the truth from anyone simply because it's not popular. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. That means, you know, you got, you got to ask yourself, would God do this? Are you ready for it? The hottest, newest, latest, greatest that I saw on the internet today from Christian, from Christian Today magazine or whatever. This couple, and, the, and this magazine calls them a, a, a committed Christian couple, and I say hogwash, are evangelizing through swinging. They trade off with other people and have sexual relations with them so they can lead them to Christ. I mean, SMH just don't cover that. Shaking my head just don't cover it. And they, and they actually believe. They said, well, how can you be more intimate with another person than having sex with them and then lead them to Christ? Well, let me give you 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, where the apostle Paul said that he keeps his body under, lest when he has preached to others, he should be found a castaway. And th these people actually believe. They actually believe that this is a form of evangelism. It is. For Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, the Maggot God. 
Why do you say maggot God? Flies come from maggots, so Satan is the maggot God. That is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard along the lines of evangelism. They're bodybuilders, and they go around, they, and, and they call them a Christian couple. All, in, all the articles call them a Christian couple. No, you're not. Be an imitator of God as dear children. Well, the next verse says, Pastor Ed, and walk in love. Well, we're going to keep reading. As Christ who also loved us and have given himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God for, to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Now Paul's walking in love did not include fornicating and adultery. We are just, it's just, and the church is just going, that's a great idea. Oh, they're a committed Christian couple. Who are you to judge? Called of God, anointed by the Holy Ghost to declare what the Word of God says. That gives me the right to declare that's sinful and unrighteous and ungodly. And if you don't like it, sorry, pal. The Bible says if you walk in love, then it turns right around and says, but fornication and covetousness and uncleanliness, don't let it be named among you. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For you know that no whoremonger, and I guess if you run around switching couples right regularly, you're a whoremonger. Nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. <coughs> Verse 6, let no man <clears throat> deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye, therefore, be ye not therefore partakers with them. Now, I don't know how you can get any plainer than that. Hello. He said, well, God doesn't judge. The Bible just said the wrath, God's wrath comes on people because of this. We're under a new covenant. God doesn't have any wrath. Just said, just said it, Bible because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. And then he tells the church, don't you be a partaker with them because of it. Why? Because if you are, the wrath's going to get you. Now, I'm not talking about you made a mistake and you, uh, you, you sinned today. You went out and uh, you just had a, you did something crazy and you were feeling horrible and you grabbed you a slits and got drunk. God will forgive you. But if you do it every day, if you're living that way consistently, you get yourself hooked up with the wrong bunch. Hello. Now, I'm not trying to get anybody licensed sin, but God will forgive sin. But you, can't, but you can't practice it and live there. If you think you're just going to practice it and get away with it because you're under grace, you're just sadly mistaken. And he said, here, let no man deceive you with vain words. In other words, it doesn't matter. You cut, watch my TV program, you send me offerings on the television, you buy my tape series about how you're under grace and it doesn't matter. Those are vain words when God's word says his wrath comes on people who practice these things. Where's the voice in the church? I know you, it's not popular. You can feel a building up with preaching popular stuff. You can feel a building up telling everybody we don't disciple people here. One of the biggest, fastest growing churches in America says on the website, we don't disciple. If you come in here to get discipled, you're in the wrong place. But we do drink. What do you mean you don't disciple? How can you say you don't disciple when Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all men? We got a special. No, you don't get a special calling. You don't get a special out over what the head of the church told the church to do. 
Why do I teach the things I teach and impound them and pound them and pound them? Because it's my job to disciple you and cause you to grow up in Christ. If we don't give you the equipment to grow, to change, and to mature, and you become effective in the body of Christ, we're not doing our job as ministers. Amen. Paul said to be followers of God as dear children. We're to imitate us. We're to imitate God. And I just have a hard time seeing God swinging to win some people to the Lord. Hello. Yes, Jeff, the golf club. But not changing partners. And, you know, and it wasn't a thing of they change and they go home and witness them. The guy flat out said, hey, how can you be more intimate with somebody than having sex? Then you lead them to the Lord. Hello. Biggest bunch of goobity gawk. False doctrine, lies from the pit of hell. Uh, and then the magazine just, the magazine should have said so-called Christian couple. Because they're not. Who are you to judge? Bible. I said Bible. Committed Christians. Committed Christians act like Jesus. And when they make a mistake, they repent and get cleansed and go forward again. Committed Christians do the word of God. Hello? It is time. Paul wrote to the church who we were in Christ in the first three chapters, and then he tells you how to live it out. And part of living that out is not doing certain things. And he, the first one he listed was fornicating. That covers all sexual sin. Adultery is even more specific because you're, you're, you're violating a covenant between people's marriage relationship. But fornication covers all sin outside of marriage. I mean, all sexual activities outside of marriage. In any form, it covers it. Marriage between a male, biologically chromosomic male and a biologically chromosomic female. Only kind of marriage. Anything else is a lie. This is the only kind of marriage there is. Therefore, a man should leave, not, not if you identify. I identify as a female. And you're going to the women's locker room. Right. And, and listen, high schools are letting this happen now. Elementary schools are letting it happen. They identify as female. Letting the little boys go to the girls' bathrooms and locker rooms because they identify as female. I'm telling you, this, there's a bunch of perversion in academia in the, in the minds of academia. They are perverts. And they live out their fantasies through other people in the educational system. It is time. Somebody's got to start talking, for folks. The church has got to rise up. Well, you've got to walk in love. I am walking in love. They're after your children. They're after your children's mind. They're out to pervert them. They're out to pervert society so that we lose the image that God created us in. He created us male and female, created he them. He didn't create, and I mean, Steve Martin had it a number of years ago. I remember years ago back when I was, you know, he, of course I wasn't saved. And he was, his, his, his album, his uh, album, joke album wasn't saved either. But, he, you know, he says, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Hello. Well, that's right. He didn't create, he, he created them male and female. Well, I identify. You need help. Either, either the devil cast out of you or you need some psychological drugs. It's not normal to go cutting body parts off or adding body parts too. Hello. Because you identify with something. I'm sorry. This, this stuff is going on and the church just sits around and goes, we embrace everybody. We embrace your your homosexuality. We embrace your transgender. We am, listen, don't, don't, don't you think for a second that the object of the, the homosexual community, the LBGT, lesbian, bisexual, gay, and transgender community is not to shut the church down. Don't think it's not. If gay marriage is upheld by the Supreme Court and then they're going to start passing laws that the ministers have to perform the marriages. There's already a town in Illinois or Iowa that has passed an ordinance that if ministers don't marry gays, they're going to lock them up in jail. Huh? Iowa? Idaho. 
Now, of course, you got to go fight. See, and the thing is, they can pass it and lock them up. Then they got to go get lawyers and fight it. It's to drain the church. This is, this is, a, this is a demons unleashed from hell to attack the church. And then even in Canada right now, they cannot preach against homosexuality. It's against the law. It's hate speech. So we had to let the homosexual community infiltrate the church. Where God, and you wonder why you're not going to have any power. You're not going to have power where the enemy is allowed to infiltrate and to establish and take over. And you can't do anything about it legally because it's against the law to say anything about it. This is deliberately aimed at destroying the church. All we want is tolerance. No, they don't. Have you seen the demons on them when they begin to fuss about somebody didn't accept their, their lifestyle? Hello? There's a venomous devil that comes out. It's venomous. And then we got people in the church who are just so stupid. I'm sorry, I'm, a, I'm just fed up with the lie of the enemy in the church and the church laying down and capitulating and acting like it's all okay. Paul said, walk in love. Hallelujah. He did, say, he did say walk in love. Be imitators of God, be followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ has also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet smelling savor. But, see, the, the world says if you say anything is sinful, that's not love. It's hate speech. Paul said, walk in love, turned right around and said, but fornication, and I'll unclean this. And, and now listen, most of the time the word uncleanness means homosexuality. It's an unclean spirit. And we don't want to get into the biological details, but you can figure out why it's unclean. It's a nasty devil. Dad Hagen used to say he could be in a prayer line and you'd have a homosexual down the line. He said he could smell them in the spirit. He said it was a foul odor. Oh, that devil. That devil is, is, is a foul smelling devil in the spirit. I don't know about you. I can get around certain people sometimes. And it's not that I hate them, but that demon spirit just it brings an agitation down, a disgust. You love them because you want them free. You want them to go to heaven. But that devil, you don't like. You want them to go to heaven. You want them to be delivered. You want them to be free. You don't want them bound by the enemy. But I'm telling you, that devil just kind of just it, it, it gives you the creepy crawlers because it's a demon. And I can be around it and not know, not see somebody and then, you know, then see them later. But, I mean, you, you could sense that devil. I can, I can drive into certain towns and tell you there's an educational spirit over it. As soon as you're driving to town, you can sense that, 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 that intellectual demon that, provides all, that drives all these crazy things into the minds of particularly in, in minds of our youth and and, and as, as one person calls them skulls full of mush they run off to college and they try to rebrainwash them and re rewire them into being some kind of liberal nutcase got talking to some girl she was hosted somewhere the other night and she was uh, talking about, how, I don't know why she started talking, but she started talking, talking about how that she just had to you know, talk with her dad and talking about she was on the debate team arguing over the fact that we need to tax uh, sugary drinks to deal with obesity. And she kept, she was like, I said, I don't drink anymore. And I just looked there, I said, don't mess with my drinks. If I want to drink them, I'll drink them. And don't, ta don't let the government control it. She just shut up and walked off. I don't need the government telling me, I, you know, trying to tax, tax me out of drinking something that I want to drink. If I want to drink four two liters a day, that's my business. And if I die early because of it, that's, and I don't. We got to do things in moderation. That's, that's, that's just common sense to do things in moderation. But you notice they don't tax beer at a higher rate to fight obesity. Have you noticed that? And they'll sit down and drink 24 cans in a row, back to back. That's right. You don't get twofers. Well, you know, that's, that's alcohol. You can't mess with that. Wait a second now. You don't think beer make you fat? Have you seen kids who go to college and get to these colleges the first year they come back with the belly? Everybody calls it the, the freshman 10. It's, it's, it's Miller 10. Hello? Don't need that crazy mess. That educational spirit, crazy. Homosexual spirit, you just can sense it. You still love the people. 
Amen. And I will not tell you it's okay to make you feel better. All fornication and uncleanliness and covetousness. I have a responsibility to tell you the truth, and I love you because of it. That's why I'm telling you. It'd be a whole lot easier. Oh, we just love everybody. Come on in. We'll marry you. We'll bury you earlier than other people. And you'll go to hell, but you'll think I was the greatest thing since peanut butter and sliced bread while you were alive. And you'll curse me the rest of eternity in hell because I didn't tell you the truth. I will not lie to people and tell them what the word of God says is sin. I will not tell them that it is not sin. And they can pass every law they want to pass. Go ahead, liberals. Pass every law you want to pass. I will preach the truth, and you can lock me up, and I will preach the truth. You can threaten me, and I will preach the truth. And it will remain the truth. Because God's word is eternal authority. Amen. Well, just back off and preach love. Paul just said to walk in love, then he turned right around and told him what not to do. Didn't he? Why? Because we've got a generation of people. Have you noticed our generation that's running around out there today? It's the Spock generation. Y'all know who Spock is? We ain't talking about the pointy ear guy. I'm talking about Dr. Benjamin Spock and his stupid book. Burn it. Get it out of your house. It's the dumbest book on parenting ever written. I read it. I thought it was cool. We'll pray for you. Spot says, don't spank your children. You'll teach them to hit. The Bible says the rod of correction drives rebellion hard, far from the heart of the child. Now, who are you going to listen to? Spot or God? Hello? Don't be, your, don't be an authority. Be your child's friend. I'm not here to be my child's friend. I'm here to train them up in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart. My job is not to be his friend. My job is to be the guide in their life. The example and the guide and the, and, and the parameters to guide them into where they're supposed to be. It ain't supposed to be their pal. Now, when you become adults, when your children become adults, and I don't mean 12. I don't mean 14 and 15 and 16. Well, my children are, you know, they're 15 and they think they shouldn't go to church, so I let them make up their own mind. You put your foot under my table. You, you, you put the food on the plate from my provision. Your back end's getting up and going to church with me, whether you like it or not. That's just the way it is. Well, you can't make them serve God. No, but they're going to hear all of it they can hear. As long as I have that, that, that place. In the, now, when they move out, I can't make them go. But when they're living in my house, they're going. Well, you, you're forcing them to serve God. Nope. I'm setting the example. This is what we do. This is how we live. And you're not going to have any questions about it. You're going to do it while you're here. Now, if you don't like that and you move out and you stay home from church, that's your business. I'll pray for you. But if I'm putting food in your mouth and a bed, a roof over your head and a bed on your backside, you're going to church when we go to church. That's just the way it is. Now, I haven't had that trouble with my kids. Okay. We hadn't had that. We hadn't had to tell them. We hadn't had to ever use that. But I'm telling you, if they come and say, I don't want to go. <laughs> Tough. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'll get you, I'll get you an appointment with Dr. Phil on the Oprah show. So you can expect you can just blow all that off, but you're going to church while you're here. Amen. What are you going to do? Well, I mean, to put it like this. If you ain't going to go to church, you ain't going to have no car to drive. You may as well go find you a job and buy you a Vespa because you ain't driving my vehicle to go do something other than to go to church while you live in my house. Well, you're an evil ruler. Nope. I called as long as you're living with me to be the guide and be, bring you and show you and let you. Listen, get them in church. God can do stuff. Yeah, yeah. One more thing. 
They don't need to be game timing or, or app timing or whatever they're doing on their cell phones in church either. Hello. They need to be hearing the word. That went over big. Well, my, my, me and my spouse aren't in agreement. Tough. Tell them to take it up with somebody. Amen? All right. Well, I know that was hard, but listen, we've got so much Mickey Mouse preaching now. <clears throat> Everybody wants to be liked. And I figured out nobody likes me anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Just go ahead and go for it. I mean, what have I got to lose? They didn't like me anyway. Kind of got that figured out. So I'm just going to keep saying it and say it bolder. So no fornication, no uncleanness, no covetousness. He said, listen, we said about those three things. Don't let it be named once among you. No, full, no filthiness, foolish talking, jesting, which are not convenient. You know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, which is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you. As we get back over here to verse 6. Let no man deceive you. What do you mean deceive you? Don't let people tell you that it's okay to do stuff. Don't let somebody come up to you and tell you this. It's all right to fornicate. You're under grace. Paul said, don't let anybody deceive you. God's wrath comes on the children of disobedience because of these things. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are you the light in the Lord. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now Paul comes back and says that having the fruit of the Spirit, which is good, goodness and righteousness and truth, helps us prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. Did that mean there are things that are unacceptable to the Lord? Why do we have such a hard time with this concept in the church now? Because people want to believe the lie rather than truth because it caters to their flesh. And they enjoy the pleasure their flesh gets out of living in sin for a season. Paul gets even stronger. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, oh, rather what? Reprove them. You're being judgmental. No, I'm reproving. I said, I'm reproving. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for who, whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now, this is the Apostle Paul preaching to the church, telling us to be followers of God, walk in love, and then he turns right around and talks and just starts blasting and telling you don't be doing these things. He said, matter of fact, about the things of darkness, reprove them. Reprove them. But you see, you get all these people out there going, that's judgmental. That's judgmental. That's just, shut up. You're just a parrot mimicking the devil. And it's time that somebody stand up in the pulpit and tell them to shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're listening to people who don't even know what they're talking about. They're unlearned. They haven't studied the scriptures. They're unlearned. They do rest of the scriptures. But they're cool, and they got a good marketing system, so everybody thinks they know what they're talking about. Hello? You sound mad. I am. You could be angry and not sin. I'm fed up with the lies of the devil being sold to the church and young Christians catch, getting caught up in it, being deceived, being led astray, coming out defeated, coming out de de destroyed, coming out divorced, coming out messed up, coming out living in sin, not knowing how to get out of it because the people they were sitting under, the people that were guiding them, led them in a path of destruction. 
all for money's sake. Didn't have the gumption to stand up and tell them the truth when they didn't want to hear it so that they could live right later on down the road. And live full of power, live full of faith, and live victorious down the road. They were willing to sacrifice him at the altar of their success in order to get the money, and they'll sacrifice those people and let them go to hell and let them be shipwrecked and let them be destroyed so they can have money. It's time that the church become the church. It's time ministers be the true ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They'll tell you that that is sinful, it is wrong. You cannot do that and live a successful Christian life. God won't put up with it. Now come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. God is looking for the church. I know people are looking for the, 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 the nightclub church, the fun church, the happy clappy church. The hula hoop church, where they can go in there and have a good time and never be convicted and never be condemned and never have to face sin and never have to deal with sin and never have to deal with, you know, this is wrong. They could be told that they're just living right. Everything's good. Everything's hunk of dory. Just keep putting the money in, baby. Just keep putting the money in, baby. Just keep putting the money. Buy my tape series. Buy my books. Buy this. Buy that. Let me live and, you know, and, and have a million dollars and millions and dollars and millions of dollars. Well, I tell you how wonderful you are and how great it is. And all the while, your life is headed toward destruction. Because you're not being empowered to live victorious. You're not being empowered to rise up in the hour of, of the enemy coming in like a flood where the Spirit's going to raise up a standard against him. You've been sold a bill of goods. You've been told. I mean, listen, if you're going to believe some of the stuff these guys are telling you, I have got oceanfront property in Colorado at a deal. Hello. They're doing it at your expense. Let no man deceive you with vain words. What are vain words? Anything contrary to the wholesome word of God. Where God says don't and they say it's okay. Where God says there's a penalty and they say there's not a penalty. Where God says this is what wrath comes on people for and they say there is no wrath of God. And see, we got over to the charismatic word of faith circles, and we were trying so hard to make sure that, nobody, that God was a good God, that God wouldn't judge anybody. God wouldn't bring his wrath on anybody. We were just going to have a happy, clappy time. And all the while, we're setting people up for failure. And right there in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphire fell dead after the church started because they brought a lie into the church. And I was sitting in the meeting when Lester Sumrall prophesied and said, before the Lord returns, the day of Ananias and Sapphire will return to the church. People love it when you tell that story. I just see people get up and run when I say that. But let me tell you something. Every time a judgment came where sin was trying to be brought in, the church grew. Because it purified the church. After Ananias and Sapphire, the church grew. Why would the church grow? You know, and today people would leave and never come back. That's because the church... I want to tell you something. There's going to be some house cleaning. I said, there's going to be some house cleaning. Not because somebody made sin and made a mistake, but because they're perpetuating sin and they're giving vain words to the people and they're tying a yoke of destruction around the neck of the sheep. All for the sake of success in the eyes of men. The Lord will not put up with it for so much longer. Well, just to uh, everybody say glory. glory. Yeah. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 
Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not intoxicated. does not mean sloppy drunk. It means intoxicated. With wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Let me say something here. All this hubbub about it's okay to drink, it's all right to drink, let's go ahead and drink, I want to prove that it's okay to drink, it's all right to drink, we're going to go out after church and have a beer, we're going to go out after church and have some wine, we're going to have this, we're going to drink, 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 drink. I am telling you, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, for your often infirmities. Amen? He did not say drink a little wine, he, and he said little, and he did not say for pleasure. He said drink it medicinally. Well, Jesus turned the water into wine. I'll guarantee doggone to you one thing. It was not alcoholic. How can you prove that? They had well drunk, and the Bible prohibits drunkenness. For him to turn that water into wine so that the men would get drunker would violate his own word. The same word translated wine is translated grape juice, fermented or unfermented. You have to take it in context. Here, drink, be not drunk with wine. So that's obviously talking about you know, alcoholic. Don't be drunk with wine. Don't be intoxicated with wine. But be ye filled with the Spirit. But, you know, he, he sets a, a thesis and then an antithesis. Don't go around drinking. You don't need to drink. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Stay full of the Holy Ghost. See, all getting drunk with wine, get, you know, going out after, afterwards and having wine and drinking so we can be cool Christians. Why don't you go out so full of the Holy Ghost, you don't need a glass of wine. Amen. Well, this wine tastes good with red meat. This, you know, red grape juice is good for you. They have, I mean, red wine is good for you. They have found that red grape juice is better. They have found out the antioxidants in red grape juice is better than red wine. So get you some Welch's red wine. Go to the Biltmore and get their, their Concord grape juice. It's delicious. It's not fermented. And it has better properties for you than the, than the red wine does. Comes from the same grape, just not fermented. Oh, but we, we drink in our church. <laughs> Estonia lost the move of God. God was moving in Estonia like wildfire when the Iron Curtain came down. Went back a few years later and they had to weep. Because all they could talk about was, they wanted to get together talking about, was it okay to drink? They already had made their decision it was okay to drink, and they lost the move of God. People I knew that were on fire for God, full of the Holy Ghost, I mean fired up that the, 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 the Russians were no longer in charge, that they had prayed communism out of their country, that they were having God move in their country, were now become liturgical, become anti-faith, become anti-the Word of God. They were now able to drink. That's all they cared about was if they could drink. Don't be drunk. Don't get intoxicated. Don't be drinking all that mess. You don't need all that mess. Well, I, I win more people to the Lord because I tell them I drink bull. All right, I'll say bovine excrement, all right? Bull droppings. That's about what it measures up to. I don't cuss, and I don't say the other word. So bovine excrement. Cow waste. Hello? You, you come up with that mess so you can go out and do it. There's nothing wrong with it. What? How are you going to? Why don't you go get the drug addict and sit down with him and smoke a reefer? It's legal in Colorado. It's not illegal in Colorado. Bible don't even say anything about smoking dope. Hey, dude. Want to serve the Lord like me? So it's going to start with alcohol. This is going to go to drugs. Let's, we, can, we can shoot up and still serve the Lord. It's all right to have sex with somebody outside of marriage. Now we're going to start wife swapping in order to win them to the Lord. Come out from among them. We don't do what the world does. It was so, it was so obvious to me that Paul, that Timothy wasn't drinking and he was having stomach problems because the water was bad, that Paul had to write him and say, hey, look, know you've made your, this is your, you got to read between the lines here a little bit. I know this is your stand, and I know you're doing it to have a good testimony, but drink a little bit to purify the water. Pour some in the water and purify it. 
because you're having all these stomach problems. You do it medicinally. I remember my grandmama called my mama one day and said, I feel so good when I take that NyQuil. She said, Mama, it's 25% alcohol. Oh, do you think the Lord's going to send me to hell? I mean, she... <laughs> Liquid NyQuil used to have like 25% alcohol, crazy amount of alcohol in that little cup. It, I mean, it burnt all the way down. I mean, it was like, you know... Be not drunk with wine. Don't get intoxicated with wine. That's excess. Be filled with the Spirit. Here's the whole thing. You don't need the alcohol. You don't need a Chardonnay. You don't need white wine. You don't need red wine. You don't need champagne. You just need to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Make a melody in your heart to the Lord. You don't need a glass of wine to go to bed at night. You need to pray in tongues for an hour. Glory to God. Are you here? You're going home. Giving thanks always for all things unto the Lord, unto God and the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not going to finish him. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Why submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord? Now, men, let me tell you something. This does not mean that woman's got to do everything you want to tell her she's got to do. She submits to you as unto the Lord, which means what? It's a caring, governing relationship that is in her best interest. She's not your slave. Now, Nathan loves to pick on Shannon. This woman, submit. Get in the kitchen where you belong. And, she, and, and Shannon, she's got, she's, when she does, she, she purchases her lip. It's hilarious. Make me a sandwich. And it just draws the fight out of her. And he loves it. <laughs> and then it starts quoting, woman, submit. That's really not what it's talking about. It is, you understand, the, 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 uh, the qualifier is as unto the Lord. Wives are to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord. What do you mean qualifier? The Lord has our best interests at heart. The Lord will not abuse our submission. The Lord will use our submission to lead us into good places and the places of blessing. He'll never harm us. He'll only do us good. Amen? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he's the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Now remember, this everything is in relationship as unto the Lord. Husbands, now the woman's told to submit, but the husband's told to love his wife. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ died for the church. He laid down his life for the church. So men, don't you come in with this hogwash. I told my that woman's got to submit to me. I'm the man. Not if you don't love her like Christ loved the church. And if you don't, I'll take my shepherd hook and beat you with it. I got one somewhere, and I'll pull it out and hit you upside the head with it. Going there smacking your wife around, beating your wife, treating her like a dog. No, you're to love her as Christ loved the church. He gave himself. He died for the church. Why? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That it should be holy and without, I mean, be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it even as the Lord the church. Now, the women are told to submit, but they're told to submit to a man who loves her, who cherishes her, who nourishes her, who lays down his life for her, who's not going to abuse his authority over her. That's a biblical submission and authority. It is not you're the king and she's your dog slave. And if you've been treating your wife like that, just go ahead to the mirror and slap your own self. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now listen, the King James says in, the King, in, in Genesis, they shall be, he shall cleave to his wife. But it, the word really means this, united or joined to his wife. Doesn't mean that you don't have anything to do with your parents. 
Some people come up with some of the dumbest stuff. Does it mean, you know, it does mean that you, you, you're joined to your wife. They're one flesh. You now are a new entity together. But it doesn't mean mom and dad don't have a position of respect and honor in your life. And they don't qualify until you marry and have sex. You're not, you're not one flesh until the, that, that takes place. So if you're dating, you forget it. This doesn't apply to you. It doesn't apply. Now listen, Jesse came to me about a month or two before her and Cap got married and asked me a question. What do you think about this? I said, honey, you're going to have to go ask Cap. He's going to be your husband. It's not, my, it's not my place to tell you what to do after you get married in that particular situation. Now, they can come to me and ask me questions. I'll give them what, what I, my wisdom, my experience from life, but whatever decision they make is up to them. I might think it's stupid. I hadn't found one yet, but I, you know. <laughs> well, I'm <also can't>, you know. sucking. <clears throat> you know, but, you know, it's up to, at that point, once, they, once they're married, you know, I, I no longer have the, the right to tell Jessica, honey, don't do that. That's stupid. Now, I could think it. One, two, three. There's four times. Anyway, I'm messing on y'all now. But they're one flesh. They're joined together. Now, her, their, their families, their parents, are, are resources or pools of wisdom. I can't tell them what to do. I can, I can still have wisdom from experience. Say, you know, this might be a better idea than that. Okay? But, then, you know, you have to make the decision. But I'm not, we're now pools of wisdom. We're not the authority. But when you're, until you're married, that's not so. Now, when she came to me, there was a, the question had to do something after they got married. I couldn't answer that question before marriage because that was going to be something they were going to have to make a decision about together. So I told her. I don't remember what it was. I just remember doing it. I, I remember doing it. I just don't remember what it was. But, you know, you have to ask Cap. Because that's going to affect you after you're married, not before. You know, if you had before marriage, then I, then I would, well, here's what I think. But now if it's going to be, this is going to be an after marriage situation. You're going to have to ask him. All right. So you're joined. You, when you get married, you're joined. Are you here? For this call shall a man leave his father and mother, and they shall be joined unto his wife. They shall be one flesh. You don't need no mama's boy. If you're married, you don't need no mama's boy. But let me tell you, you girls, if you're dating a young man and you're not married, you ain't in charge yet. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to come in and be submitted. And stop fighting the, in, the, the future in-laws. Ain't there any fighting them? Hello? You're not joined yet. And then when you get joined, you're supposed to submit. You shouldn't be in a situation where you're fighting them anyway. Hello. Now, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Of course, he's using an allegory here. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and see that the wife she reverence her husband. Now, Shannon and Nathan need to be in here next week for this next verse. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first, oh, listen, which is the first commandment with promise. Paul, I mean, we're not going to go in here. We're going to pick this up next week. But think about this. All these people who say there's no such thing as New Testament commandments, Paul said obeying your parents is the first commandment with promise. He makes it a New Testament commandment by quoting it. He establishes it as a New Testament commandment. This is the first commandment with promise. What? That it may be well with thee that you may live long on the earth. I'm under grace. Well, I tell you, if you don't obey your mom and daddy, you're going to die early. That's what Paul said. Preacher of grace said that. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, 
please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.